so nice to be here with oh, you today. Thank you for coming over. Um, so Rachel is a good friend, longtime friend, fellow mom, fellow New Yorker, um, and uh, there's so much um, that I could talk about with Rachel because she's um, fascinating on lots of different levels. She's an accomplished artist and a wonderful tennis player, nationally ranked, right? I, yeah. I really want to spend time talking about your um, the time you spent in India. So what, what year did you go? I went in 2001, okay. um, right after 9-11, actually. Mm. So it was during that time of uncertainty about travel. And so I was pretty, um, I was pretty nervous. My family's pretty nervous about, about my going. What made you decide to go? What propelled you? Yeah. So what happened was the backstory is that I was at this really unhappy uh, point in my life. Um, I was married to someone very nice, but he was not the right person. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I belonged. Um, I was just, I was very unhappy in my own life. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, if I can find a way to be happy in this situation, you know, just change my perspective or had some sort of tools to help me be more happy right now, I will be happy in any situation in my life. Like I just wanted to learn how to be happier with and the way things were. So were you thinking that you would, you were in this situation and you wanted to stay in it, but that perhaps it was on you to make yourself happy? Yeah, I wasn't sure. So I, I just, I, it really just started with this thought, I mm -hmm. want to be happier. Okay. How yeah. can I be happier here now? Which a lot of us can relate to yeah. that. Yeah, and, and um, not even a week later, I was in a bookstore, and I'm walking by, and there's this big book, and it says, The Art of Happiness. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I was like, all right. Yeah. So I went over, and it was by the Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he wrote the book with someone else. And my only knowledge or experience with the Dalai Lama was from Caddyshack when Bill Murray <laughs> referred to playing golf with him. And so I was like, all right, you know, why not? I'll give it a shot. And I read the book and it had such a profound mm. impact on the way I thought about things. And it wasn't that it was um, such a profound message, but it was just the right time, mm -hmm. the right place. And there's so much to that, I believe in it. It was really, it was life changing. So the big takeaway from that book was that if you're unhappy with the way something is, you have to confront that. Mm -hmm. You can't change other people. You can't change the city. You can do all these things to sort of make, you know, yourself feel better. But until you actually confront the actual thing that's making you unhappy. In the book, are there tips on how to get happier? Necessarily, or yes, is it okay? There are so part of it is is changing the way you look at something, just mm -hmm. changing your perspective or reframing a situation. So when you got to, um, so you decided, okay, I read the art of happiness. Yes, I confronted what was making me unhappy. My whole life changed. Um, I went through a divorce. Um, I moved. I, I had a different job. And um, I was feeling a lot better, and I was very grateful. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to the. Uh, Tibetan government in exile, and I went on, you know, I think it was Yahoo search. I don't even know if Google had come out yet. I just got my first email account, and I was like, oh, the Dalai Lama lives in India, and so I read the story about how he uh, left uh, China, he escaped, and how the government um, was in the foothills of the Himalayas mm -hmm. in northern India, and I was like, wow, okay. So I wrote to them, I said, hey, I give um, these workshops on biotechnology, uh, would you be interested in having me give these workshops to your teachers? Mm. Um, and they wrote back like within a week, like, yes, when can you come? Amazing. Yeah, because I, I was like, oh my gosh, like I hadn't told anybody. And, and I was like, I, I've never been to India. I, I mean, and the turnaround time is fast. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it was, that's it's really just, fast. When a door opens like that, that's it's just meant to be. It was right? meant to be, mm -hmm. completely meant to be. So I packed up all this science equipment. I had bacteria that like, <laughs> glowed in the dark and things you could never no. bring in a suitcase anymore <laughs> and plates and uh, for growing bacteria and like DNA fingerprints and, stuff. and so I uh, packed up the suitcase and I went to India and everybody my parents everyone was worried about me because mm -hmm. of the world's situation we were just so uncertain what was going to happen and so everyone tried to talk me out of going like yeah. don't go it's too dangerous they would tell me these horrible stories from mm -hmm. someone who knows someone and I just was like, I've got 
to go. And everybody kept saying, Madame, you're so brave. And I was like, oh, thank you. And then by the fifth time someone said that, I'm like, all right, what am I, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to be freaked out about? What am I being brave about? Because I am like, you're really freaking me out. Right. So um, I guess women just don't usually travel alone. And sometimes just kind of jumping in and doing things yes. um, without thinking about that is yeah. a good way to get it done. But di totally different world <laughs> and experience. So, um, so when I got there, um, actually just prior to having left for India, someone saw that I had this necklace that was Tibetan. Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, that's a Tibetan necklace. And I'd become like this big Dalai Lama fan in the few yeah. months that I had read this book. And, um, you know, I wasn't a Buddhist, but I, I just really admired, yeah, you know, admired him. So I said, yes, and I'm going to India to teach. And she goes, oh, you've got to meet my friend. He does, has this program that he started. It's called Science for Monks. It's wow. the Dalai Lama's monks. They're learning physics and math. And so when I talked to the person running this program, they said, let's try biology. And I was like, great. So Amazing. I ended up teaching some of the Dalai Lama's monks while I was there too. And that was just a serendipitous meeting, this woman, that you, she yeah, noticed just, your necklace and then... Yeah, I was at a conference. It was crazy. And so uh, teaching the monks, I, I had to actually go to this very remote monastery mm -hmm. and there weren't really any other women and I had a translator. And wow. um, so they were very free with their questions because I think if they were speaking directly to a woman, it would have probably felt a little oh, different. They would have been inhibited, mm -hmm. but they, they want to know about everything. They want to know about reproduction. They didn't know what cells were. They didn't know what DNA was. They, didn't, they got that, you know, okay, you get the char characteristics from your parents, but mm -hmm. how? Had you taught classes before? Yes, I had a, I started a small business um, where I went around the United States teaching biotechnology workshops okay. to teachers and at schools to K through 12. So you were able to meet the Dalai Lama, is that right? Yes, okay? so coincidentally when I was there for a workshop, uh, they had something called the Mind and Life uh, mm -hmm. Institute was doing a lecture series for three days and they said, oh, since you teach the monks, why don't you come and, and uh, listen to the lectures at the Dalai Lama's residence? because they're talking about science and mm -hmm. the integration of Buddhism and science. I was like, you know, okay. <laughs> so he just, uh, I just went in and it was in the Dalai Lama's living room. I was wow. like, how did I end up here? And they put me, you know, in the spare seat next to all these high llamas and Amazing. across the aisle from me was Goldie Hawn and Richard Gere and in the center was, was the Dalai Lama. So. And does he, I, you know, fantasize about meeting him someday, and I always think <laughs> I know. that, um, you know, does he radiate that sort of peace and... He is definitely charismatic, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, he just has wonderful expressions, a wonderful voice, he's so, he's so attentive. What do you think your biggest takeaway from that experience or those times so that you traveled there? I mean, I know, I would imagine. Yeah, it was really... Um, it was really an important part of my life and it really changed sort of the way I make decisions and the way yeah. I, um, I just even think about uh, uh, my daughter, um, trying to pass on those things to her that I learned the hard way, which of course never works. Yeah. But I think my biggest takeaway was, was not to have expectations because, and, and we've talked about this before, yeah. you know, when you have low expectations, you're not disappointed, but also it leaves you more open mm -hmm. to things happening. To, so to possibilities that maybe you wouldn't have even thought right. of, right? Yes. Or I, that's I would think. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have something, you know, it's it's different than intention because I think intention is like a very specific need, but but expectations is sort of more, um, mm -hmm. um, in, I don't know, more encompassing. There, were, there was one llama that just kept saying to me, you know, like, Rachel, you, you have to have lower expectations. Interesting. Lower expectations. And it was hard to kind of understand that because... For me, that was like, don't expect much from life, you know? Right. Which, I, which wasn't the message. I, I know. Think. And that's where I think that um, gets kind of confusing. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that used to tell me in college, your expectations are too high. And I, and I never, and I think he was probably coming at yeah. it from the same way. I want all these things for my life. and But I think yeah. you're right. The distinction is sort of like, well, it's okay to um, have these sort of wants and desires, but then maybe be open to the outcome. Right. And don't be disappointed if it's not exactly what you thought, but it yeah. could be better. Oftentimes yes. it is. Or I what you need rather than what you want. Exactly. And there I, was sometimes the right thing just sort of has a way of finding you. you know, how did your life change when you came back? Because then I'm you... so happy. You were. I was so happy. So one of the other things that I really took away is that I thought when I met the Dalai Lama finally that there'd be some sort of like, oh, mm -hmm. feeling and I would be happier <laughs> and whole and all would be well again. And I felt like completely the same. Mm -hmm. Even though it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. It didn't change 
my core, like my happiness. Sure. So, and it was a real ownership of, I, it, for me, that's when my real ownership of making myself happy, mm -hmm. I'm responsible for making myself okay. happy occurred. So, um, How and that's you? really freeing and empowering. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have those expectations from, from anyone else. Yeah. And um, I don't have to be that for anyone else either. That's you know, right. Like they're in charge of their own happiness. And you're in charge of yours. So you can yeah. provide that at any given moment. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look outside yourself. Right. And it's a simple idea, but it, it really, if you, if you don't really own that, you can spend and waste so much time, your own and other people's time, trying to be happy, make them happy, have them trying to make you happy. I think that's a really good point. And I think for my, I, and I understand that concept. I can't always implement it, but I think even just being aware and knowing that um, when you really need to do it, you, I mean, when I really, really, really need to do it, I can do it. Yes. You know, I can say, all right, I got to take a break here. I've got to do this for myself. Or, mm -hmm. um, so there it's is, like, oh, this isn't my problem. This is actually your problem. Well, and you I know? love that. Yeah. <laughs> I went, I went to this beautiful, um, there are these Japanese women on the, um, Lower East side that do these beautiful meditation. They it, sort of meditate with them and then they kind of oh, wow. do all this kind of aura stuff around you. And, um, one of the things she said to me the last time I went was, um, you know, others, other people's baggage is not yours. So I walked out of there thinking, uh, you know, and just the way yeah. she said it or the way it hit my soul, it was the I was right like, thank you. At the right time. And so from that time, and that was a couple months ago, it, it really, it was the time that it really got ingrained in me. So whenever someone's baggage kind of comes over, I'm like, oh no. Yeah. And that is incredibly freeing. Absolutely. And, um, and, and it's also true. Like right now, a brownie would make me feel really good. Yeah, which I but think in the gonna... long run, <laughs> I know in about a month, I'm going to be very upset while I'm sitting on the beach in Mexico. Oh, well, yeah. Or not. Or not. Maybe I'll be like, hey, <laughs> I ate a brownie. And it was delicious. And Deal I... with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to eat another one right here on the yeah, beach. That's right. <laughs> When you came back, though, you it sounds like you started to make real changes in your life. Yes. What did you, you know, do? So about two months after I got back from my last trip yeah. to India is when I actually met my husband. And I think I was so happy that, you know, wow. the right things were being drawn to me. I don't know. I'm, yes. I'm drawn to people who are happy, too, though. I'm like, yeah. you're happy. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so anyway, so I met my husband and... Um, I, I, I got a job that had more purpose. Wow. Um, and then eventually we had, uh, we had our daughter who's yeah. just the gift and the, the calling that I had been having for years, her calling to me was just in my ear and, um, and you know, you I followed the path and, and got to meet her. Because you're oh, allowing you. her to be who she is. And, and I is think that... That's what it's about, I right? think I do. And, I, and that can be hard, right? Because talking about expectations, we can put yes. expectations on our children or others around us. But I also think it's a really good lesson for... Um, for us, like the little girl inside yeah. of us, too. Yes. Like, guess what? You can be who you want to be. It's very healing. And, yeah. Yeah. You and get to do the things for them what you wish somehow you had owned more or kn knew earlier or figured out right. earlier or... Rachel, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, I'm so appreciative, you. and I always love being with you, and it's always an inspiration and uplifting, so... Oh, thank you. Thank you, and I'm, I'm sure friend. I'll see you soon.